Linda, how are you? Hold on, you're muted. And mute you. Maybe I try now. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Let me turn you up. Actually, I turned my volume way down. Hold on, let's see here. I saw the message and I was like, oh, guess I better figure out how to get on there. <laughs> I think I have, I have like, for some reason, Zoom is requiring um, a waiting room now, which is super annoying. What? Yeah, and you have to like let people in. So I, That's it drives me crazy. Hey, Kristen. Ah. Uh. No, no, it always says bot on there and I always am like uh, I know I have to change it do what I have to change it I'm going to change it somehow my um, <laughs> three-year-old starts yelling it's been a day so <laughs> very possible yeah, but your, your top is totally it's been one of those I'm Melissa Graybill I love that shirt Corey Thank you. I like leopard stuff. It doesn't really, I have on like kind of these like camo-ish leggings, so I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> but you know what, it's all good. You see where these people are. I'll give them a couple minutes. I don't want to, I don't want to start late. Sorry, click on you. Okay, we're already recording. Hi, Melissa Graybill in your brown sweater. Go to participants. Has your day been okay? It's been crazy. It was busy. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm hoping to stay on. Caitlin's not home from work yet, so I need to talk to her because we're doing college classes. So she, she walks in the door, I might need to get off, but it's busy as usual. Yeah, how is, I didn't ask you how the, um, how Kyle's school has been going. 
well, my husband's just listening to the school board meeting now. They may be going back to school four days a week. Oh. I really, really hope. Um, but I don't know. He's listening to it now, so I have to get the recap. But it's that would be awesome. I mean, every it's so strange. Like every place is ours, so it's like ours is going time. in the opposite direction. Closing oh, down ours, again? Yeah, well, there could be. Are the COVID numbers are going up? So they said next week they're gonna watch it this week. And if they don't change, then we're going to all virtual next week. It's getting worse. It's so hard for people who work. It's so hard. Very. I, mean, I have flexibility, thankfully, but like you guys who work like regular jobs, I don't know how you do that. We're private school. Do what? I could put him in private school. I would. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. put it. I'm just praying that they don't have to follow the same as the public. I don't know. Maybe, well, they, they don't have to um, in private schools. Usually, don't. So ours did here, um, which was weird. Like every district is different, and so ours chose like one district to follow, <laughs> but it's not the district that I, that we're even like associated with if we went to public school, so it's weird. But. You guys have a thing in Texas, like if you go to certain states, you have to quarantine, because we have a list of 31 states right now that if you leave Pennsylvania and go to, you, like I couldn't work for two weeks. Do you have that in Texas too? No, there's some corporations yeah. that have it, like specific corporations have that, but not the state overall. Mm -hmm lovely governor linda <laughs> yeah i think pennsylvania is like off the charts um you in california have like your own roles and everybody like, else is a separate country <laughs> yeah it's like pennsylvania california and then everybody else texas is pretty lax i mean i wouldn't say lax but as far as like compared to pennsylvania for sure and um, mm -hmm. still wear masks everywhere um we still like are supposed to be socially distancing and all that but most places we go, like a lot of people don't even wear masks, like outside and things like that. Um, you know, so it's it's definitely more um, it's definitely more laid back, I would say. I'm moving. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's not like our. I mean, our numbers are not great, so. I don't, yeah, yeah, well, neither are locking yeah. down. We're doing. Yeah, nobody knows. I mean, that's the thing. If, if we could show that there was a correlation there to like the masks and you know having lower numbers, but there's not, there's doesn't, there doesn't seem to be a correlation. So it's like, I don't know. I mean, this is the thing before we get started, I gotta just say, say my piece really quickly. Um, when we started all this, like with masks and everything, it was, it was about flattening the curve, right? So it wasn't ever like, let's prevent every single person from ever getting it. That was never the idea. Like the idea was that probably at some point most people are going to get it, but we just don't want them all to get it at the same time to overwhelm the healthcare, you know, the healthcare providers, hospitals, all of that. And so, and of course there are people who are at risk and all that, and we want them to avoid it, but um, it's just, it's so interesting. And now they're almost like, oh, like if anybody gets it, it's like this big thing, but that was never, we never thought nobody would get it, you know, are we, that was never the idea. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's just range and then after the election it's it's different <laughs> yeah. it like people are i don't know but it just calms down and people are like like whatever happens i hope it just calms the heck down <laughs> that's my, but anyway okay that's neither here nor there i'm gonna go ahead and introduce Ms. linda warren because our east coasters um don't want to be up all night so <laughs> And um, thank you guys who are on the call, accommodating us for a different day and a different time. I know it was confusing and for a lot of people. So thank you for being here. I know a lot of people watch the recording and that's cool too. Um, but we are so privileged to have Linda Warren on our team. If you follow her, you have been inspired by her and you have smiled when you listened to her or watched her or read her posts or, I mean, she just like radiates joy. And like, I, when I think of Linda, I just think of like happiness and joy and positivity and all that wrapped in a neat little package. So <laughs> she's just amazing. But her post, like, you know, that she's an amazing storyteller. So she, her posts just like grab your attention, but then they like 
they tell a story and they're so good. Um, and so today she's going to talk about the power. Oh, by the way, she's always got like top volume on the team, like always right up there, like her volumes off the chart. And so, um, I, I think that she just, people trust her and people like her and she has that, that thing that, um, attracts people to her and her stories are part of that. They're amazing. And so she tells these great stories and kind of weaves them into her post. And so anyway, she is going to be talking about that today of talking about stories and telling stories and the stories that we need to be telling. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Linda Warren. Woo! If you know me, I love to start with a good woo! Are you going to sing for us? Absolutely. Here's a story. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to go with something there. So storytelling. Okay. This is not something I used to do. Um, of course, I didn't do any of this like five years ago. And I don't really, I'm not here to go into my health and wellness story or my how the heck did I become a coach story, although those are good stories too. Um, but I want to talk about the importance of telling a story because in the last, I don't know, maybe two years, um, and, and maybe even a little longer, I've started to evolve my posts into more storytelling because that is truly how we connect. Um, a good story is something that is going to stick with somebody beyond just the posts that they read. They're going to be able to maybe see parts of themselves in you. A good story um, will also, it has the power to transform lives. It really, truly does. And as I was thinking about how to best give an example of this, of course, a story came to mind. So I am somebody who, it drives my engineering husband crazy. I am big, massive action and totally distracted. And when I walk in the house, I never put my keys in the same place. They're never in the same pocket, never in my same you know place in my purse. I'm always fumbling for keys. Um, and I have four children. So you know there were times when I had a lot of littles and you're walking in the door, juggling babies and bags and whatever. And I never locked my car door. And so when we lived in Maryland, um, one of my favorite parts about being a, gen a general dentist is connecting with people. And um, it, I just, I love to hear about them. And then they have to listen to me while their mouths are open and my hands are stuck in there. But anyway, I, I had a patient that I was chatting with and, you know, one of the natural conversations is, oh, do you have any children? And so we kind of talked about mine a little bit. And then she shared with me, because my children were little, and she said, the only reason I'm sharing this with you is because of the age of your children. And she said, I, I, I have a son. She said, but when he was three, we fell asleep one day on the couch together. We were taking a nap and um, he woke up and I didn't hear him. And he got out the front door. And when I woke up, I couldn't find him. And when I did find him, it was a hot summer day and he had gotten in the car and he had shut the door. And he died. So I'm not, <laughs> I know I went from woohoo to singing to whatever, but that story was so powerful. It was such a teaching moment. She did in two minutes what my husband couldn't do in 10 years. And that was to get me to lock the car door because I had small children, because that was that powerful to me. So this is not what this is about. And this is, you know, but it, it, I just want to speak to the power of stories and your ability to change lives. Um, the other thing that is amazing about stories is stories have the power to not just make people like you, but they have the ability to have people more like you, meaning you will draw in the community, the vibe, the tribe that you want when you learn how to share who you really are. And you can't be afraid of telling stories. You're gonna be awkward, you're gonna suck. There is nobody out there who has ever written their most amazing work of art. When you think of like, you know, Rachel Hollis, I think she says she wrote like six or 12 or something like that books, published books before she hit Girl, Wash Your Face. You know, and then she put out the, the second book and it wasn't as popular as the first. And you never know what stories are gonna to speak to people and what aren't, but they're not gonna speak until you learn how to unleash them. The great thing is everybody has stories. How do I know? Uh, if you're alive, if you're breathing, if you woke up today, yeah, you have a story. Things happen to you today. 
you just have to learn to look for them, to recognize them, to think about maybe how you can, can create from them. Um, and that's just practice, just like working out or learning how to eat healthy or all of those things are habits and practice and sucking at them at first and getting better and going from there. Um, there is an amazing book and where this whole thing came from is Kendra Hall's Stories That Stick. And she was, she's a, it's an amazing book. It's got lots of good stories, but she also provides a better framework than just my rambling. So um, there is the four major components of a story. She actually did like graduate study work on this and she continues to use stories as a way to change um, big corporations and that sort of thing. So there are actual data for this, but that's not what this is about. Um, so she did the research behind it and what they found is there are four main components to any story. One, you want to have identifiable characters. A good story has a person in it or even an animal that somebody can relate to. So for example, a long time ago, there was the Super Bowl with the big Clydesdale horses and the tiny little puppies. There weren't people in that per se. But that super duper popular um, Super Bowl ad, people related to the animals. So you can relate to puppies, you can relate to horses, you can relate to people. But what you don't relate to are like products. You don't re you relate to a car. You don't relate to a shake. You don't relate to a set of dumbbells. People want to have an identifiable character. They want, the, the biggest impact you're gonna have is if they can see themselves in you. Um, a story is going to have authentic emotion. It could be shame. It could be guilt. It could be fear. It could be joy. It could be empowerment. Um, it could be excitement. But if a story has an identifiable emotion, guess what? People can connect with that as well. Um, frequently, it's good if there's a significant moment. And it doesn't have to be anything life altering. It can, it can seriously be, I stopped at a stop sign and then it hit me. Okay. Who doesn't stop at a stop sign like a bazillion times a day, right? But that might be the moment. Um, and if there's a moment that you can kind of work your story around, that is a great um, component of a story. And then specific details. Specific details does not mean data or charts or PowerPoints. I've got none of that. But what I'm here to do is, is tell a story to you about creating stories. Um, when you go to an ice cream parlor, okay, would you rather see a list of all of the flavors or would you rather experience the colors laid out in front of you? Which is actually gonna have more impact? Or think about it, I think there was, um, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, there was a commercial where there was a teenage boy along for the holidays with his family at Christmas. They obviously went to like grandma and grandpa's house and there's the boy on his phone and they're at dinner and he's on the phone and they're making cookies and he's on the phone. Christmas morning, they're unwrapping gifts and what you don't realize, what the whole ad shifts to is that the boy has used those moments where everybody assumed he was being a teenager and on the phone to create this video of memories. And the whole commercial lays out this phenomenal ability of a, of a phone to capture life's moments, to edit them seamlessly, to generate you know, a legacy of, of a gift. And it did it without telling you how many pixels or how many cameras or what kind of views or the speed or the editing capabilities or anything like that. So specific details are not numbers. People zone out at numbers. I can't even tell you if it was an iPhone for sure, but I can tell you that I remember that commercial, that it impacted me. Um, and I, you know, if you have been somebody who has been showing products or talking about workouts, or I did that. I, I still occasionally find myself talking too much about the program that I'm doing or, you know, that sort of thing. People don't, they don't know what 30 day breakaway is. They don't care. Um, you know, I had a, a, a picture taken with Sean T and I can talk about him and how much I love him. Now, maybe people have heard a little bit about Sean T, but here and there, there's, that's not the importance. It's not the person. It's not the product. It's not the, 
you know, when we talk about the, the, the Netflix of fitness, we, we kind of use that term because people do know Netflix. But if you talk to them about like Beachbody On Demand, they may or may not know what Beachbody is. And that's not what's important either because it's not what we have to share in the way of products. It's what we have to share in the way of potential and stories and how it's changed your life and how it may it can change theirs. So the, the four major components, again, they were um, a relatable character, they were an authentic emotion, they were a significant moment, and then specific details that aren't data per se. If you have just one of those, people can pick up and relate to it. If you have two or three or more, you're going to have an additional impact. So you don't have to have all four, you don't have to have them in any story. But when you're crafting your posts, Think about them. And isn't it interesting that both Instagram and Facebook have developed stories? And everybody says, oh, I have nothing to share to my stories. The whole point is your life is a story. <laughs> These little insignificant moments are truly what make up you and what, are pe what people wanna know about you. They wanna know, are they like you? Or do they like you? They wanna know both. So what you think isn't important is, is probably actually what you need to share. When you are doing a longer post, when you want to speak to somebody, when you want to you know, have a, a, a picture or something impact somebody, there are three, um, there's a framework that if you follow is really easy at helping you to learn to craft a story and one that develops a good story. So what Kinder calls it is, the normal, the explosion, and the new normal. She put this book out before COVID, by the way, because I am done with the new normal, but <laughs> um, I do, I, I like the idea of it. So when you're looking for a story, usually the easiest thing to look for is that explosion. It's that small moment. It's the stop at the stop sign. Um, it's the, you know, something happened to you. And that's just an easy place to start, but that's actually probably the least important part of the whole story, believe it or not. The more important part, part is the normal, the before normal. It's the, how were you feeling before all of this? What led up to that moment? And that's the part where you really start to develop your craft. And then the new normal is, well, what changed after the explosion? I mean, and it doesn't have to be like massive or life altering or whatever, but there should be a difference between the old normal and the new normal. So if you just post one of those, not as much impact. For example, if you just post before and after pictures, the explosion, people will scroll by that. I mean, they'll look at it. They'll go, yeah, that person looks great. Okay. But they forget about it. But if you hear about the normal, of the person who struggled, you know, for 20 years through infertility or a drug or alcohol addiction or whatever self-limiting beliefs or a, a history of abuse or a horrible family situation, and then they changed their lives, you know, there was a moment, and then they became this new after, all of a sudden you start paying attention to those pictures. Or for example, I ran a marathon, okay? That is something like a small percentage of the population does. If I just posted a picture of me crossing the line at the marathon, who the heck relates to that? As a matter of fact, I probably um, am less relatable for having completed a marathon because I know I thought people who did half marathons were crazy before. But if I go back and I tell you who I was, and if I go back and I tell you that five years ago, I couldn't jog a mile. If I go back and tell you that I was hospitalized and I could not get up a flight of stairs with having to pause to take a breath, that I wasn't allowed to have my heart rate go above 100 beats per minute and my resting heart rate was sitting at 96 at that point. If I tell you that I had cardiac muscle damage, that I had congestive heart failure, that it took me a year before I was healthy enough to start to run, that it took me two years to run a half marathon that it took me an additional year to set the, or two years to set the crazy ridiculous goal and I give you the buildup to that day of the marathon. If I tell you the story about how the day of that marathon, I pulled other people and I asked them, you know, their best tips and it was to wear things that every piece of clothing that you put on to make sure that it had a meaning 
and if I shared that with you, and if I, they told you that every single mile you should dedicate in honor of somebody who helped you along your journey, and I'd laid those people out for you, wouldn't that story touch you? And wouldn't it all of a sudden be a lot more relatable than me saying, hey, I just ran 26.2 miles and I am so proud of me. So it's important to keep that perspective because you are going to change along this journey. And sometimes people are going to relate to you and sometimes they're not going to relate to you. And if you have all of a sudden developed a habit of getting up at five o'clock in the morning and you want to reach people who are looking to make life changes but don't know where to start, you need to make sure that you include some of your old normal, your fears, your hesitations, that sort of thing, so that they can relate to you, so that they can start to picture themselves in your world too. And when you just give the explosions, you're not leaving open, you're not c connecting with people properly. Um, the, the new normal, you can go into as much or as little detail as you want. I think sometimes you, you almost want to give, leave the door open for more changes, for more potential, and for people to see themselves there. But you do want to tell them what you've found because you want to plant the seeds and that it's possible for them too. Um, where do you find your stories? If you've never written a story before in your life and you're still telling me nothing happened to you today because you just laid in bed all day and didn't go anywhere, um, stories usually revolve around people, places, things, your senses, your feelings. Um, it's really easy to think about the first time stories. And these are, are good ones to start with, like your first job. Do you remember what that was like? Or your first love? Or the first time your heart was broken? Or the first time you looked into your child's eyes? Or the first changing leaf on the tree? You know, the first growings of spring, the first snowflakes, the first time you jumped in a puddle. All of those are moments that you can turn into and use for stories later. Remember, in, in what we share, we don't just want to share our health and wellness journeys, but we also want to share about other moments in our lives. Um, when you, one of the things people love is they love healthy recipes, right? But what if you, you know, the, one of the, um, in trying to share Shakeology, instead of sharing its benefits, its lists of vitamins and probiotics and adaptogens and phytogens and all the things that are in it. One of the posts that I did recently was me with a, um, I think it was a pumpkin spice ice cream that I had made. And I talked about how my entire life, my father, um, ever since I was little, every night my dad and I would have ice cream together. My dad would eat ice cream every night out of this little green plastic bowl that had three little tripod legs. And it was a bowl that his mother had given him when he went to college. And my father grew up very poor. And so he used to use that bowl for cereal when he was at college. Um, he would have cereal for like breakfast and lunch. And then for dinner, he had a loaf of bread and he had some bologna sandwiches. But anyways, as he got older, every night my father would fill this bowl with ice cream and he would sit down and he would read the paper. And then I had a smaller bowl and I would sit and read the funny pages. And we bonded over this every single night. And ice cream had a deep emotional meaning for me. And as I got older, I would have ice cream every night, but was not healthy about the way that I had it. And I would eat half a gallon at a time. And, um, just there was this horrible emotion to it but the bowl that I held in my hand is me learning that I can still enjoy my ice cream that I can have a healthier version of it and I think that when you when you draw people in that way um you know and then anybody who likes or comments on the post you can ask them do you enjoy ice cream too you know what I found is that ice cream doesn't have to be a bad word I can still have all the love and the, the fondness for it, but I don't have to have the sugar crash. I don't have to feel guilty about it after. Um, I can still keep those memories close, but now I, you know, I found a better way. Or if you want to share a recipe about a soup, maybe you talk about, you know, growing up every time I was sick, my mother would make chicken noodle soup. Um, and she tended to use a lot, uh, you know, it was filled with love and all these good things. And so I'm so grateful that I have a healthier version that I know I can share with my kids when they're feeling under the weather too. And then that's a great way to be able to share recipes. Um, or, you know, we're coming up on um, holiday foods. You can, or and I guess another really good example too for us, I'm not a cook. So recipes are really hard for me to share. 
when we were home over COVID, I very quickly resented having to cook dinner for my kids. Um, so I posted about that, right? Because there have to be other mothers out there who hate cooking, who can't cook, who you know dinner is done when the fire alarm goes off. Um, so what I did to be less resentful towards my family was to force my children to help me. So one night every week, each of the boys had to pick a recipe and they had to cook with me. Um, and I, it actually became one of my favorite memories of the, the eight weeks I was home from work. Um, and my one son really, he found this healthy General Tso's chicken recipe that the whole family loved. So that was one where, you know, I just, I didn't post about, hey, look at me, I'm getting my son to cook. I shared the whole fact that I hate to cook. I was really resenting having to do this, um, that this is what we did. And this was a great recipe that we found. And then anybody who liked or commented on that, I shared the recipe with them. Recipes, those sort of posts are a great way for you to make true, genuine connections with people. And that's a big part of what we're about. Uplifting, sharing vulnerably, getting to know other people. You know, 90% of those people probably aren't gonna end up on our team. But that doesn't mean that I haven't touched or impacted their lives or I can't tell you how many people have come back and shared recipes with me for things that my family might like just because I've done that sort of thing. Um, and that would be my final tip about some stories. Vary the types of stories that you do. Again, don't make them all about before and after fitness, but when you're doing your fitness posts, think about that. Um, if you do inspirational quotes and posts, and I do, I mean, who doesn't love when a positive post pops up on the feed, right? But it doesn't get a lot of interaction. If you tell a short story about why do those words all of a sudden mean something to you? Or like if you hear, you know, Autumn in the workout say, you can do anything for a minute or something like that. And those are the words that stick in your head that day that are the words you needed to hear. Why? Just share the why. Why did that speak to you today? Because for what, whatever it spoke to you, there's probably somewhere out there, someone out there who's had those feelings or may feel that way too. But if you just put the words, you can do anything for a minute, well, I don't know, that's not going to mean as much. Um, think along the lines of, you know, expanding more upon why certain things speak to you, giving background, your old normal, the explosion, the new normal. And the, the last thing I would say is um, interactive story posts are great too. You know, we're coming up on the holiday season we're kind of, I guess, past Halloween, but now is a great time to share ideas as well as ask people for input for others. Um, Kristen did a great post the other night, uh, I guess just last night, about her and her family doing like a thankful cloth. And what you can say is, I, you know, this is a way that we found to involve our whole family in a practice of gratitude. Have you ever done anything like this? Or, you know, there was one time I was reading a story to my daughter and it, I don't know if it was, for example, the night before Christmas, okay? Uh, every year before Christmas, my father would read the night before Christmas to us on Christmas Eve. And so I've continued that tradition with my children. Are there any books that you as a family read the night before Christmas? Um, what is your, you know, favorite, do you watch Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving special? Or what is the first Christmas movie you're looking forward to watching this year? Ask that question, but share what yours is and share why. And those sort of interactive, engaging posts just make people remember your stories, you're giving them ideas, and they're likely to share back with you too. So stories have such a value. Stories are what make us relatable. They're what help us find the people who are most like us. They are how we stop selling and truly get to the heart of who we want to help, how we can help them, why we can help them. They're what keeps our posts from being annoying, maybe. Um, they're what makes us us. There's no wrong voice for a story. Everybody has their own. Yours will develop over time. My stories are still developing. I cringe at things I used to do. And sometimes I still have a post or two where I'm like, ah, oh, did I really put that out there? Um, my stories are filled with grammatical errors, spelling mistakes, my punctuation is atrocious, but that's me. And um, it doesn't have to be you, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but don't let your fear of being perfect, don't let your fear of telling the wrong story, of saying the wrong thing, 
don't let that hold you back from learning to find your voice, from learning to develop your story. And remember, there are so many great writers who had works and works before they had one that was truly their masterpiece. And I think we've all got more than one masterpiece in it. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I don't have much more than that. It was a phenomenal book about the power of storytelling, a power that I truly believe we all have deep inside us, one that I believe makes us better coaches, better humans, better friends, when we learn how to speak and share um, using that. And I hope, you know, the tips of the, the format, the normal explosion, new normal, um, and the four different components actually give you something a little concrete to work with. So, ta-da! That's it. Thank you, Linda. I actually have a question. Do you come up with like your stories first or do you kind of think about what you want to say and then find a story to go with that? Like, what's oh, your wow. That's a yeah, that's a good question. Um, it probably just depends. There, there's a lot of both going on. So a lot of my stories come from personal development that I'm listening to, podcasts, that sort of thing. So it's more along the lines of I'm doing a workout the trainer says something and it hits me and it sticks with me. And then I try to think of why it's sticking with me. You know, what moment in my life is that relating to? Or when I'm reading a book, why did that phrase speak to me? And then I go back and try to look for pictures of that. And I, I, I'm also working on the habit of just taking random pictures or snapshots throughout my day, but then looking at them and going, okay, well, really, what's the story behind that like what what am I trying to say about this particular picture so you know I just posted one tonight and it really isn't any story at all but um my daughter decided to make dog biscuits you know so I decided to share a picture of that and I guess I, I could have gone more into the I just did a quick this is you know I'm not a, a cook and these aren't pretty more along the lines of and I asked a question have you ever made healthy dog food um but you know, I guess I could have gone into how everyone in our family has eaten unhealthy for decades. Myself, my kids, even our <laughs> poor dog who's, you know, and that. You were going to tell uh, us about y'all trying the dog biscuits. <laughs> well, I did. She did too. They're vegan, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but, they, and they've got peanut butter and pumpkin and like, who doesn't love that? But, um, you know, have developed more of a story around that but I just kind of wanted to put a, a, a quick lighthearted post but it's that sort of thing that like when you when you put up a picture of like your trick-or-treating you know what can you say about that costume or you know who remembers you know boy how costumes have come so far that we get to buy this you remember being stuck buying the ones in the little box that were plastic with the mask and you know telling a little story the more you share about who you were and where you've come from and that sort of thing the more people will pause to read your posts instead of just putting up the picture of the family and, you know, trick or treat 2020, that sort of thing. Um, so I, I'm not sure what I do more. I think it's more that I, I have an idea for a story and then I look for pictures or snippets from my workout or something to support that. But yeah, it just, it, it depends, but I probably have the story idea first and then look for things to support it. I think I'm kind of the reverse of that, but I, don't you wonder people who don't do personal development, I'm like, what do they ever talk about? <laughs> I wouldn't have any posts if I didn't do personal development. I would never have, I really wouldn't have that much to say. <laughs> yeah, right. Does anybody else And it's a question? lot of a right. Like I listen, I, I think it's important too to I think it's important too to get a variety of input. Like I've, you know, listening to different podcasts, like not just ones that are, you know, beach body or business building, like Trent Shelton's got, you know, his are spot on. Um, the life coach always has some great insights. <laughs> Primal potential is really good. I listen to a few running podcasts now, like I'll have another or, um, uh, Allie on the run. Um, Lewis Howe's School of Greatness, which that was a great book. Um, his podcast, he interviews all sorts of random different people oh, and so, like good insight into things. And yeah. Does anybody have a question for Linda? Since we have her, her here, it's rare for us to get to have her on a call. So 
Anybody? Yes. Who did? Uh, Lewis Howes is who she said. Susan? School of Greatness is his. Anybody? No questions for Linda? Anything. You can ask her anything. <laughs> I actually think I just wanted to tell you your posts are awesome. Like I just I really like to read them and it does you're right. It tell, and I like how the layout is like you kind of make it like in a poem sort of. I don't it's know. It's like a big huge paragraph. Ain't nobody ever read all that. I can tell you my, right now like if you write these huge long paragraphs without breaks like I probably am not reading it. It's it's good on the eyes. <laughs> like I kind of skim and go okay. <laughs> kind of get the gist of it but I don't take the time to necessarily read every word unless it's got like some breaks in it exactly yeah I do think visual breaks are a good idea and sometimes even like you know sentence fragments that sort of thing um I have to, I have to watch like sometimes I find that I end up rhyming words <laughs> you know like in a post you start writing things out I'm like why am I rhyming um, and and for me the whole singing thing too I know that that's kind of weird but it's also about establishing like an energy level. And so in our groups, um, I have found that singing puts me in a mindset. And so I try to find lyrics that go with like a message. So, you know, to, you can use stories for your posts. You can use stories in your stories, but you can also use stories in your challenge groups. And I think that that's important too, that when you, start to share vulnerably in your challenge groups that's where the people who are on the journey with you are really going to connect with you instead of just you know always doing motivational posts or informational posts or people really want to connect with each other i mean everything the magic is truly in the genuine connection and the only way you do that is by sharing yourself and then hopefully that provides a space and the encouragement for others to open up back back to you. Anybody have any other questions or statements? You guys are a quiet bunch tonight. But yeah, and I, I don't know that there's um, a lot to. Linda, I love seeing your workouts every morning too. And man, you can just see your muscles. <laughs> growing each week it's so exciting sister is cut so i always look for you you're you're Aww. really inspiring and energetic and just get me going for the day so it's funny about that because that was not me and even the first two years like when i have memories pop up i did not have near the definition that i have now but i will also say that as inspiring as that is if I didn't tell stories, it would just be intimidating. I would scare me. I never would have related to me. I was not this person. I would never have thought that possible for me. So, you know, that's why I think it's important to, to share the stories behind it, especially the more you get into it. And, you know, for coaches who are right at the beginning of this, you have no idea how powerful it is to put out there your struggles. I mean, the things that you don't want to tell people, the, the, the day, even in the first year of coaching, there was, I don't remember, I think it was right before Christmas, I had gone to my girlfriends and we made cookies and I actually sat out in the corner of a garage with a Tupperware container shoving cookies in my face because I didn't want anybody to see me and it was how many could I fit in. I. I finally got so disgusted with myself. I threw them in the trash and Gina, I went back in about 20 minutes later and pulled the cookies out of the trash and started eating them again. Like, and you don't want to share that with anybody, but that is what people relate to. They do not relate to the me now who can actually look at it and go, Oh, do I really like, I can recognize how sick I'm going to feel, how I'm going to crave sugar for days, that my tongue is going to stick to the roof of my mouth, that I'm going to have a headache and I probably won't have those cookies. Like they don't relate to that. They relate to the trash digger. So while that's a horribly embarrassing story, like that's the one that needs to be shared. I think our new coaches really have to, it's so hard to get them to understand that. It's so hard because they're like, oh, I want to lose a little bit of weight before I talk about Beachbody or I want to lose a bit of, get further along in my journey before I, you know, coach. 
openly or whatever. And I think that's just, it's, it's such a mistake, I think. Um, because people do relate like the, the after photo does nothing for you unless you know the journey, unless you know all the struggles and the ups and downs and all of that. And so uh, I just wish that I sometimes I just want to shake new coaches and be like, post it all, post it early and often. And, you know, all the, the hard stuff, too, because that's when you lure people in, you know, and they, they follow you and they're like, cheering you on and then they see the after and it's just so much more meaningful. So I don't Yeah, I really a lot more back then. I do. That's probably one of the few regrets I have. Yeah, I wish I was a coach when I when I had those kinds of struggles and all that because I mean I don't have all I have kind of is where I am now. And so I, I long for that. I wish that I, I can talk about it, but I don't have I don't have the pictures to go with it. And people certainly were not following me along during all of that. And so um, it's a, it's a disadvantage, I think. And it's, it's something that for people who have that, I'm like, that is so awesome that you have that share it all share it often and take a lot of pictures and, you know, definitely. But anyway, we all, I mean, we all have things that we can work with and I'm not saying that what was me or anything like that, but I'm just, I just wish that people would, would actually really utilize, um, the gift that it is. You know, to be able to share everything. Anyway, if there are no, are there any other questions? I'll ask one more time. Nothing else? All right, well, thank you so much, Linda. We appreciate your time so much and just always your energy and what you bring to our team. And we're, I know I could speak for myself, but probably everyone else that we are so thankful that you belong to us and that, um, and that we have you in our lives and that you make us better and all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. I'll post the recording in a red tag. Bye.